Hello and welcome to this special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review. I'm Peter Mogesel and I'm here with Dr. Jean-Marc Rollin, who is Professor of Microbiology and Infectious Disease at Mediterranean Infection in Marseille, France. Uh, we're recording this interview at uh, the 36th Annual European Cystic Fibrosis Conference in Lisbon, Portugal. Welcome and thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you very much to invite me. I'd like to hear about your research on the microbiome. What exactly is the microbiome? Um, in fact, the microbiome can be defined as a community. It's a community that includes um, all microbes, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Mm -hmm. And it's now viewed, thanks to a, a new technologies, as um, an entity with all these microbes mm -hmm. living together sharing some uh, um, system to communicate, and they also have uh, the possibility to exchange gene, genes together. And this is um, viewed now as the only entity with all the microbes living mm. together, which uh, uh, is called now with a, uh, a new um, term, which name is a sympatric lifestyle. Okay. It means that mm -hmm. you are living together and you have the possibility to exchange things, including mm -hmm. genes, that can help the, the community to adapt themselves to a specific ecosystem, to, to a niche, including uh, the cystic fibrosis lung, that is a specific ecosystem where uh, micro microbes can exchange genes and adapt to this specific environment. Mm -hmm. How do you go about studying it in the CF lung? Uh, you mean, uh, so, oh, we, we do this. How do you identify the different uh, parts of the microbiota in the CF lung? Um, starting uh, for, I, I said, 10 years ago, we just, uh, we were able to uh, amplify specific and target genes, mm -hmm. either from fungi, viruses, or bacteria, so that you can identify a population mm -hmm. that is a mixed population. And uh, for the last decade, uh, new high throughput technologies um, have been uh, 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 revolutionized this. Mm -hmm. It means that now you can, by metagenomic studies, using these new technologies in which you can amplify everything, including DNA, and you, you can retrieve like this a huge amount of sequences that could be assembled and compared to database to identify the, what is the population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And within this population, you can have many gigabase of sequences that represent all the microbes that are in your sample. And you can compare these sequences to database available mm -hmm. in, uh, in website or in NCBI. And with this, you can first identify the, 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 the phylotype, the phyla, mm -hmm. as well as um, within the coverage of sequences, the amount, the quantity of each of these sequence that are representative of microbes. We think of Pseudomonas as being so important in cystic fibrosis. Are there other bacteria or other organisms you've identified as being important? Yes, in, in fact, Pseudomonas is uh, probably um, the, the best and well-known pathogen in cystic fibrosis. There is two things. First, looking at this uh, data provided by these new technologies, what we found is that in the beginning of the life of patients, when they are young, there, there is a very huge diversity of microbes mm -hmm. within the lung. And step by step, we do not know why probably uh, because we use many antibiotic therapy. Mm -hmm. And using this antibiotic therapy, in fact, what we believe now is that you kill the other bacteria within this microbiome, mm -hmm. and you select a more adapted uh, pseudomonas. And at the end, when you, you, you are a, an adult patient, the diversity and richness of the microbiome decrease, mm. and there are at least only Pseudomonas. But there are many, many other uh, bacteria and microbes, mainly bacteria because I'm working mainly on bacteria, mm -hmm. that have emerged in CF patients. And mainly those 
that have emerged are those that are resistant to cholestin antibiotic. Mm. Because you use many, many uh, cholestin for, for, for treatment, for mm -hmm. therapy of, of patients. And doing this, you, in fact, you kill the bacteria that are susceptible to cholestin, but you can select within the microbiome those that are resistant. And there are many like these, like Burkholderia that, mm -hmm. has, been, that has emerged. And we, we have reported in, a, in, in a, my unit in Marseille many new bugs that are specifically resistant to cholestin, and we believe they have been selected because of therapy. Hmm. And, staphor and Staphorus also is, is very uh, important bug that has the capability, like Pseudomonas, to change, to adapt in the ecosystem by exchanging genes within the microbiome. So we think about Pseudomonas as being a very important organism in the CF lung. Have you found other uh, bacteria or other organisms that are important as well? Yeah. Um, in fact, Pseudomonas <coughs> is a, a very important pathogen in CF patients. What we, what we have found uh, recently thanks to these new technologies and the amount of data is that starting in, in, in infancy, the microbiome is very rich. There is a very huge um, diversity and richness in the, in the lung. And because perhaps of the, the, the antibiotic therapies we give to the patients to treat exacerbation, in fact, we kill the other m m microbes in this microbiome. And when the patients became adults, in fact, the diversity decreased and only Pseudomonas remains. Mm -hmm. But what we have found also recently uh, is that there are new bugs or emerging pathogens you can discover uh, and cultured from the, the cystic fibrosis microbiome. And mainly, these bacteria are cholestine resistant mm -hmm. bacteria just because cholestine is used as an um, aerosol therapy mm -hmm. to treat Pseudomonas. So in fact, Pseudomonas is an is a, a important pathogen, but others, such as Burkholderia and other cholestine resistant bacteria, have emerged recently as pathogens. And the second one that is probably also very important is Staphoreus, because it's a bacterium that is able to change its genome uh, thanks to gene exchange to mm -hmm. adapt as well in the environment like Pseudomonas. And the other microbes you, you, you can have that are a problem as well in, a, in a cystic fibrosis patient is filamentous fungi, for which the treatment is not so uh, easy to do. <clears throat> and is there um, a relationship between the microbiome in the lung and the microbiome that's present in the GI tract? Ah, this is a good question because this is a, um, a starting research. I mean, thanks to the, the Human Microbiome Project that started in 2007, we tried to start to understand what is the community of uh, microbes in uh, any place mm. in human, from, from LC persons starting from this. And thanks to this first approach, now people are working in many, many different fields to try to understand what is the relation with the microbiota in the gut and diseases. For example, the, the first uh, work that has been done on this is to explain obesity um, uh, that is linked to a specific uh, microbiota mm -hmm. in the gut. And you do not have the same microbiota from the United States or from France. And what is interesting is that if you come to, um, to Lisbon, you will change during your stay a part of your microbiota just by food, mm -hmm. by contact. And you can acquire new bacteria. You can acquire new genes, new pathway, new function. If you go to um, Asia, and if you eat uh, fish with uh, alga in sushi or sashimi, mm -hmm. you will have and acquire in your gut specific bacteria that are able to specifically cut the sugar from alga. Mm. It means there is a relationship. In cystic fibrosis, there is a few works at that time that look uh, for this. But in fact, what has been demonstrated in a paper is that the composition of the microbiota in the gut of CF patients 
is predictive of what will happen in the lung after. So it means that if you can have a, a, an ID for a patient, even if the patient is health, of the composition of the gut microbiota, you can perhaps in the future predict that you will acquire pseudomonas, for example, in the lung. Mm. And there is also something that is very interesting, is that you can also uh, identify in the gut of patients, including in CF patients, a composition that could be associated with metabolism, including the fact that you can have some uh, um, um, disturbance because of diet. In CF patients, it's mm -hmm. always the case with pancreatic disorders. And the composition, it has not been studied at that time, but the composition of the gut of those patients as compared to others could be very interesting to understand why there are some uh, pancreatic resistance in the treatment of these patients. And the last thing that is interesting also is, I believe it's my opinion, it's not a research work, but my opinion is that we need to um, imagine new therapies based perhaps on the use of probiotics mm -hmm. that could help mm -hmm. in some way when you identify that the gut microbiota has imbalance or disorder to add specifically some bugs, probiotics, that can help as a therapy. So I think it's, it's a good uh, view for the, the future in research to look specifically for all patients, both the microbiota from the lung as compared to the gut. This is one of the main projects I have in Massa in France. No, I think that's very interesting and fascinating, the possibility of predicting lung uh, yeah. organisms based on what's in the gut. How do you see this type of information being used in the future from a clinical standpoint? Oh, I think we, we are in a starting point of research that is uh, we are like explorers. Mm -hmm. It means that we need to accumulate data to try to understand the complexity. But the thing is, if you can identify that specifically the microbiota of the lung or of the gut of the patients, even a CF patient, if there is an imbalance, perhaps you can try to target specifically mm -hmm. some bugs to kill them by antibiotic therapy, for example, or perhaps you can modulate this by probiotics to try to adapt the microbiota uh, for each patient. It means it will not be uh, empirical therapy, just based on we need to kill pseudomonas, for example, but just to say this patient, because of this microbiome, need to have this, 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 and this, to have a specific and adapted therapy for each patient. Now that's fascinating, and it brings a whole new uh, meaning to personalized medicine that we talk yep. about so much. Yeah, this is, uh, this is clearly what will be, I believe this, the future because of technology. I give you an example that I believe that within the, the few years, within few years, we will be able to identify your microbiome uh, for health or for um, diseases within one day. Hmm. You can sequence everything. You can also identify if you have genes, metabolism and pathway that specifically could be associated with a disorder. And the, the, this is a, a very huge revolution uh, to, to be able to have so many sequences um, within a, a, a so fast technology. And at the end, what is ongoing in the world, and, and mainly in the United States you have done this, is to sequence your own genome. Mm -hmm and to try to identify on your own genome if there are some links within your genes with susceptibility to any disease or any infection. And you can probably will find this in the future. It's an amazing thought to be able to understand both your own biology and the biology of the bacteria and be able to figure out what best to use to treat that. Well, thank you very much for joining me and taking the time to talk about your research. And thank you for joining this special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review.